to go over beginner's trig identities. Um, the most basic trig identity is sine. I'm not going to put theta or anything. I just want to do a general idea, get you a feel of what these trig identities are. Then cosine. And the third one I want to say is tangent. Now, my order is, is non-specific, but I always like to do cosecant next. And then after cosecant, my fifth trig identity, my fifth trig function would be secant. And then my sixth one, all six trig functions, my sixth trig function would be cotangent. Now, I could put a theta or an x after that, but I don't want to. I just want to like, do some memory mnemonics here. <clears throat> In order to understand what tangent is, the way I have it written here, I can say tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So that's my first real trig identity. I represent a tangent as a combination of other two, two other trig functions. Now, because I have cosecant next, the reason I chose that, because cosecant is equal to 1 over sine. See why I chose my order? Now, secant, if cosecant is equal to 1 over sine, cosecant is equal to 1 over sine, secant's going to be equal to 1 over cosine. And that's why I chose that order. And since tangent is equal to sine over cosine, cotangent can be represented as cosine over sine. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. Since cosecant is equal to 1 over sine, that means I can flip-flop the cosecant and the sine and rewrite sine as 1 over cosecant. I also can rewrite cosine. Since secant equals 1 over cosine, I can flip-flop the secant and the cosine, and now I can say cosine equals 1 over secant. And that's the first six trig identities, um, trig functions, and I can get a little spin-off and get an identity from those original tr six trig functions. I can go a little further and say that tangent is equal to 1 over cotangent, and that cotangent is equal to 1 over tan. And that exhausts those basic ones pretty much. I'm done with those. I'm going to use a little slang here. These are called the three ugly witches or the Pythagorean identities. Um, and the first one, you should commit to memory. And that's going to be sine squared. I should put an x or a theta there, but I'm not going to. Plus cosine squared equals 1. Now there could be a letter there, cosine x and sine x. Sine squared x, cosine squared x, or sine squared theta. But I'm just going to do this way so that it's a little bit easier to, to write down. Now to get the second trig... Pythagorean identity, what I want to do is rewrite the original. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each of those by sine squared. And that's going to generate the second trig identity. <clears throat> and here's the deal. Take a look. What's sine squared divided by sine squared? Well, that's easy enough. That's just 1. But now if I look over here, what's cosine squared over sine squared? What's cosine squared over sine squared? That's going to give me cotangent squared. And then what's 1 over sine? What's 1 over sine squared? 1 over sine squared? Well, that's cosecant squared. And there's your second trig identi or Pythagorean identity, um, or three ugly witches. Okay, to find the third one, I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to rewrite the first Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. But this time, instead of dividing each of them by sine squared, I'm going to divide each of them by cosine squared. And when I do that, I get the third ugly witch, the third Pythagorean identity. And here it goes. Sine squared over cosine squared. Sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. Cosine squared over cosine squared, well, that's just going to give me 1. And then 1 over cosine squared, 1 over cosine squared, that should render secant squared. So there's the three ugly witches, or the three Pythagorean identities, and how you can derive the other two when you commit the first one to memory.